My name is Jimmy Lees. And I'm Danica Katowicz. This is a new program launching today on CCTV called Skywatch. Skywatch is about grounding the F-35 fighter jet. I've been working to stop the F-35 in Burlington since the plan to base it here was first announced in 2010. And I'm the national co-director of Code Pink Women for Peace, and we're working to halt the entire F-35 program nationally and internationally. 20 F-35 jets arrived at the airport in South Burlington, Vermont, three years ago. They take off and land in the most densely populated neighborhood in one of Vermont's largest cities, South Burlington, and they fly low over the equally densely populated cities of Burlington and Winooski and over the town of Williston, all of them within a mile of the runway. The F-35 noise is extreme. It's at least 10 times louder than that of civilian airliners. Using very accurate equipment, the Burlington Airport measured 115 decibels on the ground in residential areas. The U.S. Air Force itself wrote that repeated exposure to military jet noise at that level can permanently damage hearing. The Air Force further said that the learning and cognitive development of children is degraded from daily exposure to such noise, that it causes deficits in reading, attention, problem solving, and memory. The U.S. Air Force further said that nearly 7,000 people, including 1,300 children, are living in an area that's generally not considered suitable for residential use because of that daily exposure multiple times a day to the 115 decibel F-35 jets. By training with the F-35 in a city, Vermont airmen are not just training to operate the jets. They are inherently also training in a manner that hurts and injures civilians, especially children. That is not legal military training. It's just the opposite. The discipline for the U.S. military prohibits using a weapon in a manner that causes unnecessary suffering. It requires distinction or separation of military forces from populated areas. Training with F-35 jets in a city only makes sense if the goal was to get airmen used to hurting civilians when they are deployed overseas for combat. This should not even count as training because it violates the military's own rules. It has to stop now. The pain, injury, and suffering inflicted on civilians is one of the reasons we are calling for grounding the F-35 in Vermont and in any populated area. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, I am coordinating Ground the F-35, which is a campaign at Code Pink. Um, just as general background of the F-35 as, um, as a fighter jet, it's the most expensive weapon system in history. It's going to cost the U.S. taxpayer $1.7 trillion over its lifetime, and probably more than that. Uh, it's been riddled with issues and setbacks since the beginning. My favorite story to tell is, I think it was in 2007, the fighter jets, uh, the F-35s, were supposed to debut at the Paris Air Show. Um, and instead of sending a prototype of the fighter jet, Lockheed Martin uh, decided, you know, we don't have it. It's not ready. They sent paintings of what the F-35 was supposed to look like. So, um, you know, it, the, the F-35 history is kind of riddled with stories like that. So uh, we launched a letter in October 2022 with over 220 organizations from all around the world uh, signed on. We worked with the groups uh, in countries that were buying F-35, so Canada, Switzerland, Germany, uh, to organize around that angle of arms sales. Um, if we want to stop the F-35, we have to stop demand from the F-35 internationally. 
Um, we also partnered with the organizations uh, in Burlington, Vermont, where F-35 training takes place, and in Madison, Wisconsin, where F-35 training is going to start taking place uh, in just a few months. So we sort of see, we saw the F-35 as a microcosm of the military industrial complex. It's wasteful, it's delayed, uh, when it works, it's harmful, it's bad for the environment. It's been a huge learning tool because sometimes, you know, when we talk about the entire Pentagon budget, it's sort of hard for people to grasp. Cutting funding without something specific can seem really abstract. Uh, you know, it's $880 billion or something like that. Um, it also got a lot of criticism from members of Congress last year. While war inflation continues to punish working class people in the U.S., you know, we can sort of point to the wasteful program, fighter jets program, where it's canceling. So we hired, we highlighted a few aspects of the campaign um, in the letter. So the first was harm cost of militarism. We primarily opposed the F-35 as a weapon of war. Um, I'm thinking today specifically about the Palestinian people. Um, as videos have been circulating of the Israeli occupation forces um, raiding Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Uh, Israel has used the F-35 against Palestinians in Gaza in 2021 and in 2014 um, to drop bombs on civilians there. Um, inefficiencies and failures. The Government Accountability Office said the F-35 continues to fall short of prescribed mission-capable rates and is consistently missing reliable targets. Uh, the cost of the taxpayer, of course, we're sending billions of dollars to this program every year. Um, and spending that much money on a plane that's not yet up to speed with the, what the government requested is just poor fiscal policy and we put that in there for people who might value that more than the other things we put in the letter we also highlight environmental the f-35 uses a significant amount of fuel um, about 2.37 gallons of fuel for every mile traveled and about 1400 gallons per fuel an hour um and another thing that i want to highlight is we also, the F-35 is also part of the U.S. Strategic Nuclear Bomber Force, possessing the capability to carry the, and deploy the B-6112 guided nuclear bomb. Um, and if it was a surprise to anyone, nuclear bombs aren't great for the um, Bombs are relatively, they are, they can detonate the Earth's surface, which um, yields about 1,200 kilotons, which is the equivalent of 83 Hiroshima bombs. Um, but what makes the bomb of Sandia Labs, which is owned by Lockheed Martin, which is the company that makes the F-35. Um, so that was those were the things we highlighted in the, in the letter that we released in October um, with 220 organizations signed on. And we just actually got finished with a week of action, but um, I will leave it there. And then maybe me and Jimmy can talk about the week of action at some point in the program. Yes, um, you touched on a lot of important things. Uh, one of the things you mentioned was cost. This is a huge, enormous takeaway from anything else uh, that could affect people in the United States. $1.4 trillion for a weapon that really cannot be used and shouldn't be used for dropping nuclear bombs or any other kind of bombs. On, and for them to be, for the airmen to be training in a populated area where they know they're hurting people, is obvious that this is going to be used. They're being trained in a way that no military, self-respecting military, would allow itself to be trained. To, to be trained to hurt people by training in a purposely, deliberately, and intentionally training in a populated area where you're where they know, where they, they themselves said they were going to be hurting people. So it is so fantastic that Code Pink has taken on this issue, that they've gotten 200, they've circulated a letter and gotten 220 organizations to sign on to ground the F-35, to put a stop to this nightmare for, the, for us here in the U.S. and around the world. One of the aspects I just want to mention that has come up as an immediate crisis issue in Vermont is housing. We have a tremendous shortage of housing to the point where the state is looking at adopting a new law that would 
allow housing to be built in pristine open fields in Vermont to turn any place where there's uh, available space and you can connect to uh, the utilities into housing. Whereas up till now, Vermont has been very careful to preserve beautiful open fields and mountain vistas and views of the lake and so on. So why is that happening? In part because of the F-35. The noise is so intense that over 200 houses were demolished on 44 acres, 44 football field area adjacent the airport. Before that, the commercial jets and even the military jets were not anything like the noise of the F-35. So now that land has to remain vacant of housing and until we can get the F-35 to depart. Once that happens, this former area of working class, affordable housing can be restored and the pristine open fields in the city can be preserved. It's either or. We can't both have open fields and the F-35. It's, as Donica said, the key problem with it, it's a weapon of war. It's militarism on steroids. This is something that all of us can unite to oppose. Thanks, Jimmy. And yeah, I when I first met and talked with you about how the F-35 was impacting people in Vermont, because we specifically did want to include its effect on locals in our original letter. Um, and you mentioned to me that they demolished 200 houses while Vermont's in a housing shortage. It really just sort of gave uh, me something specific to give people when they ask, like, how we bring the war home and like how militarism affects people here in the U.S. in a tangible way outside of just spending a bunch of our tax dollars on it. It's actually creating a housing crisis um, in Vermont. So um, that that was a particularly um, important piece for me to include in the letter. And also um, in Madison, uh, Wisconsin, the a true x field um we included and we started working with uh, safe skies clean water wisconsin who are um trying to stop the f-35s from coming to madison um i forgot how many exactly are going to be there but they're supposed to be stationed there in a couple months um so i was wondering sort of what the lead up um was for you all in vermont three years ago when the f-35 was placed there um sort of if you can give any advice to the folks in Madison trying to stop the F-35 from actually ending up there? Yes. Um, we had, we had a, 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 a tremendous amount of opposition to the F-35 being brought to Vermont. And we've, we had demonstrations, we had hearings uh, put on by uh, city count, local city councils. We had uh, we, had, we tried to meet with our local representatives, both our congressional delegation, Senator Bernie Sanders, Patrick Leahy, Peter Welch, all of them refused to meet with citizens. The strategy was to avoid the issue by the establishment politicians. Their strategy was lockstep united support of the establishment and don't talk about it with anyone who might be opposed. Um, and so to the, to the extent I think that they were seeking to have happen, they kept it out of the news media. But it really, it really nevertheless uh, became a major social issue in Vermont. We had town meeting referendum kind of vote in Burlington in 2018, and it won uh, the resolution to uh, oppose the basing one with over 55 percent of the vote. Then after the jets arrived, we had another town meeting vote in the city of Winooski, uh, which is a working class city one mile from the end of the runway with tremendous amount of, of uh, deafening noise from the F-35. 
in 2021. So that was uh, uh, about a year and a half after the Jets arrived. And uh, that one was a two to one margin, 67% uh, of the vote. So there's no question that the public is strongly opposed to the F-35 training in Vermont. These are, these are things that Wisconsin uh, uh, has been doing also. They've had, they have a tremendous uh, organization and they're, mo they're doing their best to mobilize the public. And I think that that does make a difference. The main thing that uh, is necessary though is persistence, to never give up. Uh, when the military or the government is doing something as outrageous and uh, inappropriate and intolerable as providing uh, deafening noise that's hurting people with F-35 jets in a city, there's no way uh, people should ever uh, tolerate this and allow it to continue to, and to persist. So we're, per, we're continuing the campaign in Vermont. We're not going to let it happen without a big fight. This program is part of that fight. Uh, we're going to do our best to continue to build the movement, to expose the criminal uh, activity that's being foisted against the will of the people, against democracy, against the rule of law. Um, and worst of all, that, as I said before, they're training to do these kinds of um, violent uh, dropping bombs on civilian population. Why else would they be training in a city? They're getting the pilots used to hurting civilians. And this is something that uh, should not be allowed, even by people who are the strongest supporters of the military. You can't be supporting the military if you're if, you, if the military, to the extent the military is doing what is wrong, it's got to stop. I wonder if uh, it might be a good time to talk about what we've done over the last week or so um, around the F around the F thirty five week of action. Just so you know, uh, we heard a little bit about what y'all have been doing in Burlington, which is super inspiring. And actually, I got to watch live the Burlington uh, City Council meeting that you all sort of dominated the public uh, public comment section about it um, and made sure that the F-35 harm was known to your city council members. Um, and uh, so just a little bit of a recap is in DC, we kicked it off in Washington DC because um, last month, and it was at the end of March, so it was still Women's History Month, The uh, one of the vice presidents of Lockheed Martin, uh, who's a woman, was on this like women's empowerment and defense panel, <laughs> um, uh, you know, Militar militarism and feminism, I don't think go uh, super hand in hand. But anyhow, there's like a Pentagon officials and, and, and then the vice president of Lockheed Martin um, talking about uh, gender diversity in the military and gender di diversity at defense companies. Um, and so basically, as soon as she started talking, Code Pink got on stage um, with a Palestinian flag and a sign uh, that said, I think, uh, Lockheed's F-35s kill women in Gaza. Um, and uh, our staff member, Olivia, who is the one who disrupted the event, um, was able to talk for, I think, un uninterrupted pretty much until she was removed by security. Um, and she was able to say, you know, I think her name was Nancy, the vice president. You know, Nancy, like you profit, your salary comes directly from selling these weapons of war to like human rights violators. Um, and so she cited specifically the f 35s were used in 2004 uh, to bombard the people of Gaza, where dozens of Palestinians were killed in, I think, 2021. Um, and so we were able to do that disruption, uh, which, you know, was a big hit. I think it was very successful in sort of getting our message across. And then another highlight that I had was I was actually able to up to to be with safe and then i think the workers um for their annual convergence and their focus was grounding the f-35 and so we did an action at 
when I revealed the 115th fighter wing, where the F-35s are going to be placed in a few months. And we were able to effectively block the shift change that morning to kind of call attention you know, to the workers, to the people who like live around the, um, the fighter wing, like just to sort of disturb their day and say, you know, what exactly are you doing here? <laughs> um, not just let them go about their day. Um, so we did block the shift change for a few hours successfully. No one was able to get in, um, except some uh, person who almost hit me with their car. Uh, they just tried to charge through the protesters. So, um, and then after after we blocked the shift change at Truex Field, we went up to the state capitol. We did a big banner, 18-foot banner that said ground the F-35. And then some of us risked arrests and going into the governor's office to demand a meeting about turning the F-35. Oh, that is, those are tr tremendous and in inspiring actions. Um, one thing that we've, um, that we've actually is, is new here in Vermont is a focus on the emissions that you mentioned earlier in your remarks. Uh, we calculated, uh, similarly to the calculation you did, that the F-35 uh, burns 22 gallons every minute of flight. That's a whole tank of gas in my car. In fact, it's more than that. My car only holds 15 gallons uh, every minute of flight. So we're, and, and it's being emitted high up in the atmosphere, where it's not just the carbon dioxide that's a greenhouse gas emission. Way up there, the water vapor which is also a product of combustion, is a greenhouse gas. So it's really doing uh, double duty to uh, emit so much, uh, to have so much emissions high up in the sky. And, and the, the training in, in Vermont, there are hundreds of training flights every month. Uh, and it's an enormous amount of emissions it's equal, the F-35 emissions are equal to the emissions of all the civilian airliner flights put together, just from the F-35. Now, the airport, it's just a nightmare. Uh, I could go on about emissions, uh, but I wanted to also mention another thing, a pick up on another thing you mentioned, which is that around Truex Field, it's a working class area. And it's the same thing here in South Burlington, in Winooski, and in Burlington. The only uh, neighborhoods that are being severely affected by the F-35 are working class. In Winooski, it's, Winooski is the most ethnically diverse city or town in Vermont. 30, more than 30% BIPOC, 98% uh, of the children are on reduced uh, free or low reduced price lunch. It's, a, it's a, an area which needs, which, which has a lot of needs, and it's being wasted, completely wasted on the F-35. $30,000 an hour is what Lockheed Martin is generating from the flights of the F-35. For each flight hour, it's costing American taxpayers more than $30,000. This is something that working class people could benefit from if the money was spent right here in Vermont to uplift the lives of ordinary people. Instead, they're being assaulted with even more horrors. So we have the opportunity to do a lot of good by stopping the F-35 in Vermont. Another quick thing about uh, the sort of climate outfall of the F-35 is like, yeah, it burns it burns a lot of fuel. And also um, it's, it's made out of a different alloy than a lot of the other fighter jets. And so if they like crash and combust, like they, like one did in Fort Worth, um, a few months ago, it has like it releases toxic chemicals um, when it's burnt. So it, it it really has like a bunch of different things uh, wrong with it environmentally. 
And I hope, you know, as our program goes on, uh, it, I think we gave like a very general overview of what we're working on, um, but also just like to uplift and educate, especially about the contractor, Lockheed Martin, um, that is profiting off of this um, sort of boondoggle of a weapons uh, contract. Because, you know, they have made billions of dollars off of this um, and they will continue to and they continue to make money every time that the project is delayed. And Biden just requested, I think, about 40 F-35s in his new Pentagon budget. Um, so there's a lot of questions about why are we doing this? And it, I think it's a great opportunity to build the peace movement out. Um, there's so many ways and avenues for people to get involved and so many different things to care about it in regards to the F-35. Yeah, and, and the focus that um, Code Pink and other organizations are taking on Lockheed Martin is, is, really, is really important. Uh, Lockheed is knowingly and deliberately sending these, air, these new F-35 jets from their factory to places like Burlington and Madison, where they know that it will be hurting civilians. They are deliberately involved in the business of hurting American citizens in their own homes. It used to be a time when you could go home and expect to enjoy the peace and quiet of your house. And there was a revolution in this country when the British quartered their soldiers in homes of Americans. We need to fight to get that peace and quiet back in our own homes. We shouldn't be assaulted by government military forces in this safety and security of our own homes. This is a right that has been withdrawn and revoked and demolished by the F-35 training in these cities. And they're purposely doing it in cities to train the airmen to commit cr criminal activity, war crimes, when, they are, when they're uh, deployed in these U.S. wars abroad. This is not the kind of training they should be getting. I don't think airmen want to be trained in this way. We want to, so the best way to support our armed forces to keep them within the discipline for the armed forces, which requires protecting civilians. And there are five different ways the military requires protection of civilians during military operations, including training. Well, we're getting close to the time when this program is coming to an end. And I'd really like to uh, 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 encourage uh, participation. The next sh uh, program, which is going to be in May, is going to be live. So uh, viewers will have the chance to call in and uh, contribute to the program. Um, and I uh, really am uh, so delighted that Code Pink has taken on the issue of the F-35. This is a huge, uh, a huge and important thing to be doing, uh, especially when the U.S. is getting more and more involved in escalating the war in the Ukraine. And uh, and it's uh, to the and even to the point where the president is talking about uh, it becoming a nuclear war. We know that the bases of the F-35 are going to be targeted. We have a responsibility to see to it that this that the, that these bases are not in populated areas and not anywhere as. We need to build the campaign, and that's what this program is going to be doing. We're going to be interviewing many people, uh, prominent people, local people, people from international areas uh, where the basing is, where the F-35 is going. We're looking forward to your participation in the program. Do you have any f closing words, Donica? Yeah, um, I'm very, very excited to be part of this. Um, you can actually sign on to the letter as an individual. Um, we're collecting individual signatures at ground the F at codepink.org forward slash ground the F35. Well, thank you very much for watching, and we're looking forward to seeing you again or uh, next month.